What's up everyone, my name is Tom and welcome to TechStream. Today, thank you to the guys over at Sahara. We're taking a look at their new C501 ATX gaming case. So, as I mentioned, this is the C501. It is a full ATX, well it's a mid-tower ATX case aimed at the gaming market. They sent it over for me to review. Let's take a quick look. We'll start off by, if I can remember where the button is, powering on the system. So, as you can see, there is some RGB included with this. I must admit though, a little bit less than I was expecting, but we'll get onto that later. So, the main things about this, it's an ATX case, it's 80 pounds here in the UK, uh, available from a few different outlets, Amazon, Scan, I'll give you some links later. Okay, it does come included with a few fans. We have an addressable RGB fan in the rear, just the one and three fans here in the front this rear fan is a 140 I believe the three in the front also the same but the three in the front not addressable okay we do have a single tempered side panel the back here that I'll show you later is just steel standard IO reset button there's also on the top here an LED button which changes the fan so should you be using a motherboard that's not compatible you can just cycle through and then if you want to sync with your motherboard you press and hold for three seconds I think it is and uh, obviously because I don't have a compatible motherboard connected it has just gone to the typical sort of going round and round in circles with different colors it's a relatively standard affair we'll, we'll get this side panel off side panel removes now originally tempo glass panels it was always four screws one in each corner and just a sheet of glass the new thing seems to be becoming more and more common is to use a tempered glass panel with a metal frame so we've got a metal frame here at the front with some locating tabs a little bit of metal framing at the back here with some screw holes this method does give you a cleaner look obviously you've got no screw holes it's also personally I prefer it a little bit because when you take that last screw off the glass doesn't just fall off and break so it is tinted uh, for the kit considering the amount of RGB it's tinted quite heavily you can't really see in it um, I've just put a, a temporary system in here it's just a, an old x79 system um, but one thing I did ensure I stuck a whopping great big air cooler in here this is a be quiet dark rock pro 3 monstrous thing um, 160 mil depth fits with ease so you do not have to worry ever about fitting any air coolers in this. You've also got a good amount of selection here for AIOs. Um, you can fit a 360 in the front, you can fit a 240 or a 280 in the back, and uh, a 140 here at the, uh, sorry, a up to a 240 or 280 in the top, or a, a 120 or 240 in the rear. The top panel does come with a little magnetic filter. It does just sit on there, so you remove that to put your screws in for your fans and things. Into the main case though, we'll just turn this off. Pull the power so I can spin it around a bit. So, moving on into the main case, it's becoming a pretty standard affair. ATX power supply, there's a small cutout here at the back, at the front. This will allow you to fit your radiator. Uh, it isn't very big though, so you'll probably find you're gonna have fans on the outside and radiator on the inside should you wish to use the front we've got a little window here to see our power supply I don't know why they do these in budget cases um, it seems to be a budget casing at the moment window on the power supply but you're not going to be having a pretty power supply in here not something like a the Asus Thor I think it is with a little display or anything on that so this just shows off your cheap power supply meh um, on the inside, it does take a full ATX motherboard. Uh, we do have the option for a vertical mounted GPU. It's actually a three slot affair here. So even with a, a two slot cooler, so your standard GPU, you've got about an inch or 25 mil or two and a half centimeters between your GPU and the glass panel. It does mean that your GPU isn't up against the glass. So you shouldn't have too many overheating problems when it comes to vertically mounting your GPU. But We'll get onto thermals a little bit later. We do have a decent selection. There's two rows here of cable routing holes. So you've got some close to the motherboard, some further away. 
if you mount your SSDs here, which is what you can do, obviously these holes will be covered. So these ones here, if you've got a normal sized full ATX motherboard, they're fine. If you've got an ATX motherboard that's a bit bigger or even EATX, you will have to use the outside ones. This will actually take a full EATX motherboard. So if you've got a big thing, it will fit, um, but you will be limited as to your hard drive options. Two and a half will be covered, this, this, this mounting area here. At the top, same, we've got a few different slots across here to run things like your uh, fan cables, your 8-pin EPS connection, and we've got a couple at the bottom here, um, front I.O., front audio. They do seem to be actually positioned pretty well to be able to just get the cables out and just tuck them away. So cables here aren't strewn all over the place, um, not a major problem. If we turn this around a little bit to look at the front, the front, it's just a plain sheet of sort of brushed dark, very dark gray um, airflow. They are calling this a high airflow case. It's not. Um, the only options we've got is for some air intake. Uh, the top is actually completely sealed. We've got a bit across the bottom sucking in from your carpet and two very small, literally, width of my finger, 10 mil vents down the front here. And they're actually sort of almost behind the front of the fans. So airflow, as much as they say it's gonna be a high airflow case, it's not. It's a high airflow case because they've thrown lots of fans in it, but then they crippled those fans with this. If this was an all mesh front, uh, a single 120 probably outperform what this does. It's not going to be great for airflow. You're not going to be sticking a monster PC in a cheap case like this. So it's not going to be a major problem, but it's not a high airflow case. <laughs> um, I will just tip it forwards for you. So you do have, like I said, it's completely solid across the top here, no airflow. We do have a power button, a reset button, that little LED button. And then we've got front I.O. consisting of a headphone, microphone, a couple of USB 2s, a couple of USB 3s, standard all type AFR. Now if I turn this around so we can see the back of the case, it helps if I take the screws off though. Um, everything on the side panels is just held on with thumb screws. They were quite tight when it came in, obviously the factory had done with a machine. I have since undone them though so they do come off easy now. So onto the back of the case. Um, excuse the ketchup and mustard cables. It's budget power supply for this system. So onto the back, all of the original cabling here in black. Okay, and we do unfortunately come across this monstrous collection of Molex splitters. So the rear fan and the three front fans are all powered with Molex. No PWM um, option or anything like that. So you've they're not speed controlled, they're fixed speed. They're not loud, I'll give them that, they're not noisy. Um, they make more noise than my system does, which has got twice as many fans, but they're not obnoxiously loud, but there is no control. And then also included with that is what looks to be a PWM connector, as well as a little connector for your, there's another one in here somewhere, uh, for your addressable RGBs, so you have a, effectively a master, they do actually include a little bit of paper. So we have a master fan which connects to your motherboard and then slave fans which then connect to, I've lost it, this connector. So what that enables you to do is to daisy, effectively daisy chain multiples of these fans using one connection to your motherboard and then they're all connected together. They all require a Molex connector for their power. Again, no speed control. They do have these sort of little circular cable routing things. They're double-sided taped on. I actually quite liked that for a cheap case. It kept it all together. It means you didn't have to worry about using these little loops. Those ones aren't loops. Um, you didn't have to worry about using the little loops or anything like that. Um, just pop all your cables in. I suck a couple of cable ties in to tidy it all up. Uh, unfortunately, because of Molex, I had to run a whole cable just for one connector. Um, but overall, at the back, there's a decent amount of cable routing options. You've got the options here for running all of this through. This little cable here, this connects to that master fan, 
and that's the button yeah so that is your LED button here it says on it reset slash RGB it what it is some cases um, the reset button and the and the LED button are the same button and you have a choice of a reset button or an RGB button um, luckily on this case they did actually give you the option for both so I will give them that one um, my particular power supply didn't quite have a long enough 8 PS 8 pin EPS to run it right the way back you do have a nice big cutout for your back of your motherboard to be able to access coolers um, especially AM4s AM4s the back plate always falls off when you undo the motherboard um, mounting brackets so it is handy to be able to hold it and unscrew it at the same time we do have here at the front a uh, pair of three and a half inch caddies yeah so you just pull the caddies out screw your hard drives in nice and simple um, plenty of space here this is a it's a Novatec kilowatt power supply um, so relatively decently sized fits in there no issues plenty of space here at the front to be able to get your cables tucked away if you've got any extras um, and you've got about again about an inch of space maybe a little bit less about 20 mil of cable routing space here at the back to be able to hide everything then the final view that we need to take a look at is that rear IO it's your standard affair you got your rear fan your IO shield standard full uh, mid-sized ATX PCI Express and like I said that three vertical GPU mount it's unusual to see three um, it's not really needed I'm not a massive fan of uh, vertical GPU mounts especially in budget cases budget systems don't normally involve very big pretty power uh, graphics cards I will say one thing though when it comes to putting in a new graphics card you do need to remove it this single thumb screw then allows all of that to come off so that then you can fit the rest of yours I was stumped for a couple of seconds trying to figure that one out but yeah that's how that goes we do then have power supply at the bottom no removable bracket or anything like that you do have to slide it in from the side there's a couple of little foam feet underneath the power supply just to noise isolate it a little bit uh, there is also a one of these horrific plastic membrane type power supply filters I despise these things and they don't really do much um, because the mesh on them is pretty big. So that's about it for the actual case. There is one other little thing I do need to show you, and oddly enough, it's the accessories box, which I never normally bother with. But included in the accessories box for this case, as well as your usual bag of spare IO shields, some Velcro zip ties, uh, loads of screws, a BIOS speaker, we get this little box, which included two handy little extras. And those little extras are a vertical GPU mount. I mean, at the end of the day, I suppose you could be effectively building a system like this, which is, um, like I said, this is an X9, uh, X79 board, and that is uh, an AMD R9 398 gig. Effectively, it's a big card. Just by today's standards, not very powerful. Uh, so having a vertical GPU mount, I suppose you could argue, is handy. Um, you, 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 there is minimal GPU sag in this GPU. And you could, if you really wanted to, use the GPU support. Um, but I think they've made cuts in other places to be able to give you that. So we're pretty much, oh, they also give you two more extra of those round cable clips. Uh, not that there's really many places to stick them, but you do have two extras. So that's pretty much it for this case. We've had a quick look through everything. I think it's time for a bit of a conclusion. Overall, the build quality is quite good. There's no sharp edges or anything like that. The, the design of it, by the high airflow is good it's sleek it's minimalistic there's space for your cable routing plenty of securing points but it's let down by two things a single RGB fan and it's 80 pound Sahara themselves do 
cases, the P35, I reviewed that when that first came into this country. It's one of the first ones they ever made. That came with a whole plethora, plethora, there we go, we will get it, plethora of RGB fans. I think it came with four. Same price, lots of RGB fans. This case comes with one. Yeah. It's all of them or nothing, really. Uh, this single fan doesn't offer enough illumination to do anything. Um, yes, it's syncable and all that. It doesn't require extra controllers. It's not PWM supported. And there's just the one of them. If the three in the front were also RGB, it may have offered some extra illumination or some compatible RGB strips, maybe. It's just some extra illumination. And calling this, I think they've actually got it on the box. No, they don't actually. Uh, it's not marketed as an RGB case, but it kind of is by including a fan. But one fan's just not enough. By the time you've added in a couple of extra fans, this is a hundred pound case. Just to get some illumination on top. And at a hundred pound, you've got some very stiff competition. Uh, Corsair have got some budget RGB cases. A lot of the big names are, are getting well into, you're getting into big name branding there. And this, this case just doesn't quite cut it. Now, if you see one of these at a bargain price, go for it. The case itself is really good. It is just let down by that single RGB fan and the pricing. So overall, good case, just a bit expensive. So there we go, guys. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. As always, if you've got any comments or suggestions, leave a comment down below. And if you like me or my videos and want to see more of them, click that subscribe button. Thank you very much. Bye for now.